Bear with me a second. Clean this off a bit here. All right, first and foremost, call Lo Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rakadash, the Bolanis of the Apostles, the Bishops, the Elders of Great Millstone, and our Shalawan Labaharium. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Baha Shem, which means in the name of Yahweh Shai, is the name of the only begotten Son who was sent to deliver the children of Israel from their sins. Baha Shem Rakadash means in the name of the Holy Spirit, which is the volume of the book, the Spirit of Truth, and our Shalawan Labaharium. All right, peace to the elect. That's the men, women, and children whose names are written in the book of life, who's ordained to be delivered in these last days. Okay, we'll take heed to the whole volume of the book. The whole volume of the book is what's necessary, what's been given from uh, the books of Moses, which is called the Torah. All right, uh, you have the history. All right, you have the uh, the letters, the, uh, the the writings. Okay, of uh, uh, King Solomon. All right, mainly Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. You have uh, even the Book of Lamentations. All right, uh, you have the Book of the Prophets. You know, uh, from you know, Daniel, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Zechariah, Hosea, Haggai, so on and so forth. You know, we know the names. You know, the, the names are written there. You know, and they were uh, 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 those. That is a part of the volume of the book. Furthermore, when you get into the New Testament, you have Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, which is known as the Gospels, right? Which those are the records of when Yahweh Shai was born and his mission and what he came to do to push forth his message to the children of Israel, to bring forth deliverance out of this, this beast system, all right? The beginning of stages of that and what he needed to do in his death and his burial and his resurrection. All right, and then, then what? He sent forth apostles, and the apostles were sent forth, and they brought forth more apostles. All right, and then later on, after the the books of the apostles is what the book of Acts. Now, the key thing about the book of Acts is what the word Acts is short for actions. Okay, and the actions that took place in regards to this displaying of the spirit that was bestowed upon the men of the Lord, mainly who the disciples. Okay, the disciples and who the, the apostles, those that came in after the word of the Lord was sent forth. Okay, after the day of Pentecost in Acts the second, second chapter, the word of the Lord was spread abroad throughout the different countries through Asia Minor and also through the different uh, other parts of, uh, you know, um, the Parthians uh, uh, going east as well, you know. That's why he had those different men come from those different countries to the land of Israel, every nation under heaven, all right, Parthians, uh, uh, Phrygians, so on and so forth, man. You had those different men come from the east and the west, all right, so the, the word of the Lord was spread forth abroad, all right, and from that time on, that's when the multitudes would come in left and right, all right, then later on you had an administration set up in Acts the sixth chapter. All right, we had uh, Greek speaking Jews. You had uh, the natural born Jews. All right, within different countries, synagogues that was set up. All right, and then you had a dispute go on with the man named Stephen. And then when Stephen he was stoned to death, he was it was authorized the stoning and the of Stephen was authorized by the apostle Paul. Then shortly after that, when you get into Acts the 8th chapter, so on and so forth, all right, you see that Paul was what? Knocked off a horse, all right, or he was on a road to Damascus, okay, and knocked off of a horse. It doesn't say it there in Acts the 8th chapter, but it says it later on that he was knocked off of a horse, all right, later on, all right? And he was blinded, okay, and only he can hear the voice of who? Yahweh Shai. And he heard him what? In the Hebrew tongue, saying, Paul, Paul, or Saul, Saul. Okay, because his name was Saul prior to being Paul. Okay. And said, and Yahweh Shai said, Why thou kickest against the bricks? Meaning you going against the grain. All right. And then Paul was blind for X amount of days. I forget. I, I believe it was about three. And then later on, he was converted. All right. Then he had fellowship 
with the rest of the apostles, with the rest of the disciples. All right. And he was brought up in the word of the Lord. OK. And Paul was so fervent. All right. That he would get uh, when he got the word of the Lord, he would go throughout the different places that the, the, the heavenly father. All right. Through Yahweh Shai inspire him to go. OK. And then where, where did Paul go? OK. Paul went to Galatia. Paul went to Thessalonica. Paul went to Colossus. Paul went to all these different places that you see furthermore later on down the line that he wrote letters to. Okay? It's not like Paul just wrote these letters to random people. Okay? That's 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 for starters. Paul knew these individuals when you actually read the epistles. He talks about his encounters that he had with those heads of those churches and the individuals of those churches in those letters. Okay, how he had to straighten them out. They were, uh, in, for instance, in the book of Corinthians, he said when he came to them, he saw that the what? They took the Passover for light. They took it as a, a regular dinner. There was a man that committed adultery with his father's concubine. Okay? He had a relationship with those individuals. In fact, there was one where he told the man, he said to uh, for him to, uh, he said, I basically I left my coat, tell such and such to bring it when he when he comes to see me so it was a regular conversation that men have so in all reality by you saying that paul's epistles are authorized i'm talking about guerrilla hebrew which is well known already by you saying that this man's letters weren't authorized okay it's like saying that when a, when two men have conversations about you know affairs and different disputes in the word of the lord in the different camps all right, that's like see, me and I. Why we have a conversation? Well, that's not inspired by the Lord, or us making these videos, talking to the different Akim Akwaf that are out there that are, 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 are followers and believers in the Word of the Lord. That's like saying that those in the that this that this. Well, what's the point of watching videos? Okay. Furthermore, all right, Yahweh Shai had a personal relationship with Paul, and I want to bring this one out. All right. There's something that happened in particular in the book of Acts, because, again, Paul was already on journeys prior to writing these letters. All right. So writing on uh, 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 on, the, on his journey, he was getting persecuted and it was a persecution that happened in particular. All right. When he was incarcerated or jailed by the circumcision. Okay, and something happened there <laughs> that none of us have been through before, and it shows that Paul was a special man. Okay, give me one sec. It's in Acts, the 23rd chapter. Bear with me. Basically, Paul, when he was incarcerated, all right, you have to him. Okay, let me see. It is the 11th verse. I should have listened to myself. This is the book of uh, Acts chapter 23 and verse 10. And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him by force among them, from among them, and to bring him to into the castle right so these men were looking to pull paul apart in pieces tear him up and sh uh, 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 shred him up right which these things are going to happen again all right where you know for the sake of the word of the lord there's going to be threats all right 
men are gonna men and women are gonna look to kill those that stand on the testimony of Yahweh Shai. All right, check this out in verse eleven. And the night followed, the Lord stood by him. And then you got this guy say, "Oh, it doesn't say thus saith the Lord. It doesn't say thus saith the Lord." <laughs> this is the Lord, L O R D, lower caps, right? Showing you that it's talking about Yahweh Shai and not the Heavenly Father. Okay, so it says what? The night that night, following the Lord stood by him and said. Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me. Hold up. The scriptures tell you the testify the, the uh the testimony of Yahweh Shai is what? The spirit of prophecy. This is Yahweh Shai saying, because you testified of me. Say this to Paul. Alright. For as be of good cheer. I mean, this is this is Yahweh Shai literally came to Paul to comfort him. Here it is. We praying to Yahweh Shai, the hope that we get in comfort in these last days. Paul had a personal visit from you excuse me, from Yahweh Shai. All right, be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem. So must thou bear witness of me also at Rome. How can you say this man is not ordained by Yahweh Shai? See, because that's what it ultimately boils down to. When these people make null and void of Paul, you make null and void of Yahweh Shai. Paul came in representation of Yahweh Shai. When you say you don't worship Yahweh Shai, right, then you're going to deny his men. That's why the scripture says what? He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me have receiveth him that sent me. And Yahweh Shai said that to the disciples. And this is the same thing. See, if you deny Paul, which is obviously a prophet who had the testimony of Yahweh Shai, right? It's the same thing as when the children of Israel denied Samuel. All right, in the eighth chapter of First Samuel, right? Remember, it, it, it said that what? Because Israel was mad with Samuel because of Samuel's sons. It says, then all the elders of Israel, verse 4, and all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in the ways, in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the, the thing displeased Samuel. Then they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And that's the point. You see, and that's when we fast forward, you see that Yahweh Shai made the same declaration. You can see that these same individuals same spirits that are coming back that got mad at Yahweh Shai because he was speaking under his own authority and not as one as the Pharisees, which was gathering the people. All right. So the Pharisees got jealous of that. All right. Because the Pharisees, what were they ultimately under? They were under the vibration of Rome. They were under the vibration of Herod, King Herod. All right. They weren't under the vibration of the Holy Spirit. And that's where you have these same individuals. They're back. All right, when you understand the, re the concept of reincarnation, all right, you have the same individuals that came up against Yahweh Shai, the same individuals that came up against the prophets of old, all right, the same individuals that came up against John the Baptist, all right, are back now. So it's, it's no surprise, man. It's no surprise. But ultimately, the point of the matter is, is that Paul, these epistles, they are letters to men that he had a relationship with and the spirit was working with him. All right, yeah, you could bring up one time where he said that he spoke as a man in 1 Samuel, the seventh chapter. Where, where's the rest of it? 
All right, where's the other times where Paul just spoke as a man and not uh, according to the spirit? Paul, he was straight. He was straight. He was straightening out them churches according to the law. When you read First Corinthians, the, uh, 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 the, when you read First Corinthians, that's what it was all about. He was straightening out the Corinthians according to the law. Matter of fact, when you go into Acts the twenty eighth chapter, woo. When those men, when he finally made it to Rome, you had a host of men, all right? You had a congregation of men that was waiting for him because they heard of the fame of Paul. And they wanted to hear Paul's testimony, right? <laughs> so, and if I failed to mention earlier, this is when Paul started to write his letters when he was in, he would get visitors and they would come to him after he journeyed when he made it to Rome. A lot of Paul's letters is when he made, when he made it to Rome. All right. While he was incarcerated and while he was making his journeys. OK. Give me one second. Let me start from. Yeah, let's start at verse 11. And after three months, we departed and shipped to Alexandria, which had winter the owl whose sign was. Castor and Pollux, Pollux, P L O P O L U X. And landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. And from thence, we fetched a compass. Right? Let me get go down further. Right, verse 16. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together and when they come together, he said unto them, men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people of or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. Right? It says, who when they had examined me would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. Right? Because the Jews found no accusation against them. But when the Jews sp spake against it, it was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had ought to accuse my, my nation of. Right? For this cause, therefore, I have I called you call for you to see you and to speak with you because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with chains it's not like and that's another thing you got a lot of other Israelites that are out there that look at Paul's letters and think that they're actually talking to uh, uh, actual Greeks or or actual Edomites or actually individuals of other nations Paul just explained that he said look everything that I'm going through is for the sake of my nation Israel all right it says and they said unto him we neither receive letters out of judea concerning thee neither any of the brethren that came showed spake any harm of thee right so they didn't receive letters at that point you see but we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest for as concerning this sect we know that everywhere it is spoken against right see everywhere we go everybody keeps speaking up against you so therefore we want to hear out of your own mouth right so it says and when they had appointed him a day there came to him into his lodging to whom a to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of the most high right check this out persuading them concerning Yahweh Shai both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening Paul's testimony was the law and the prophets Paul didn't have the book of Galatians Paul didn't have the gospels to go to all Paul spoke about was thus saith the Lord if you will so that if that makes you feel better that's what the law and the testimony of Yahweh Shai was. 
Thus saith the Lord. And that's what he used to convey the minds of those that had not heard the word of Yahweh Shai. All right? So just like I said, in the book of Corinthians, same thing. All right? He checked them on the Passover. He checked them on, uh, 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 what you call it, um, uh, adultery. Right? In the book of Galatians, he explained to them that the law was there for us as our schoolmaster. All right? Because you had individuals in the book of Gal Galatians. Well, you had individuals in Galatia. All right? That believed that the Lord trumped the believing of Yahweh Shai. All right? But Paul expounded, he, he explained. He said, look, uh, uh, the, the law, who is Hagar, is a bondwoman, and, but through, uh, uh, through Sarah comes what? The freeborn. Until Isaac shall thy seed be called. <laughs> What's so hard? All right? But we understand that you individuals out there that come up against Paul's writings are just blind. You just, you always shot shut your eyes. They see but perceive not. All right? And that's the point. That's the point. All right? You know? And in and, and the book of Hebrews, all he does is talk about the law. You see? So, hey, they, they go hand in hand. Okay? They go hand in hand, man. All right? So I'm going to close on that, though, man. Call lawyer. How about Shimi Shai? Shalom.